Hello and welcome back to the Hudson Hangout. Today I'm interviewing Rick Joff and Amanda Silver. They were blockbuster Hollywood hits that you've probably seen, like the Planet of the Apes trilogy and Jurassic World. They've also written Mulan, which is scheduled to come out this summer, and are working on the Avatar sequels. Why did you become a screenwriter? Well, first, let's why don't you go first? Um, well, I loved movies when I was little, and I'd watch them all the time, and I would stay up late after my bedtime so I could watch movies on TV. And um, But I never really thought about writing them. Uh, I thought about it a little bit in college. But when I came out here, um, I just needed a job. So I started in the mailroom at a big agency, the William Morris Agency. And I learned uh, a lot about scripts just by reading a lot. And then I became an assistant agent and then an agent. And I represented writers. But I always wanted to uh, write myself. So eventually, um, much to Amanda's encouragement, I quit my job and I started writing screenplays to see if I could do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you become a Hollywood screenwriter? Uh, well, I was in graduate school at USC at the um, cinema program, and I was a screenwriter there. And my senior thesis was I had to write a script. And so I wrote, um, that's where I wrote The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And um, so I graduated from film school and I had this script and actually with Rick's help because he was already an agent and he knew people in the business, he produced it and he was able to sell it. And that was the start of, of my career as a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. Okay, what were your setbacks as that becoming screenwriters? That is really a such a good question, Hud. Um, the thing about screenwriting is there's always setbacks. And I think the trick of it is just to never get up, give up, <laughs> and to always be persistent. So um, we've had some successes and we've had other, and other times that we, we, our careers didn't do so well and we just never gave up. We kept writing and working at our craft and um, and that's an important lesson, I think, about screenwriting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what was your most fun project? Well, we've had three, I would think, that have been our most fun. Um, I would think that the first Planet of the Apes movie, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, we had a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was our idea, and uh, for, I would say, almost three years, we worked on the script. Uh, with very little outside influence, you know, the studio kind of let us do what we wanted. But anyway, we had a lot of fun with that. And our most recent uh, movie, Mulan, which we hope will come out once uh, the pandemic is over, um, we had a lot of fun. That we um, just fell in love with the characters right off the bat, and uh, we came really close with Nikki Caro, who directed it. But I will say this: our most fun project, without question is a script that we wrote that never got made. And it was a comedy, a romantic comedy. And I, we laughed me, the whole time. We laughed so much and we had such a great time. And it almost got made a couple of times with different people, but it, uh, it never did. But that without question is uh, was, uh, the one that I think I had the most fun with. I think maybe we- It's we so funny agree. you say that. Maybe, maybe I would say the same. Yeah. but I just, would say that sometimes, you know, all the, all the things you write don't get made and that's just part of the business. Why didn't it get like published and made? Well, what happens when you're a screenwriter is that just a few people read your script. You know, the people who represent you, your agents and stuff, and then the executives, and maybe it, if it goes out to directors or something, but if it doesn't get made, if the, so many things can go wrong, people decide, yeah. They, they change their minds or they, uh, let's say an actor gets involved and they say, oh, I really want to do this movie. And then they spend time attached to it. 
and then they drop yeah. out? Yeah, on that one, um, there at several different times it almost got made, and there's just different reasons. Yeah. But then only a hand handful of people have ever read it. Like no one knows. Like we still laugh about that script, but no one will ever. Okay, see it. we'll send it to you please, if you like. You can read you it. You still have the script? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we we it's on my it. computer. It's funny. Can you send it to me? Sure. Yes, I it's would called, love you to read it. It's called Being Booey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to work together and be married to? This is a very good question. Mm. Do you want to answer that question? Sure. <laughs> um, well, a lot of our friends said, oh my gosh, don't start writing together because it's really hard. It's hard on any partnership to be in a creative endeavor. So even like best friends can get mad at each other when they're working on uh, something creative like a script. But uh, for us, it's been actually the opposite. It's been, it's gotten us even closer and, uh, and uh, I think our marriage is stronger because we, we work together and because you have to develop certain skills when you write together that really translate well when you're married together or when you're married, like listening really well and, and uh, trusting the other person. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing I'd like to say is that um, when we write together, and I don't know if this is what happens with you when you're doing something creative in your mind, is we kind of go on these adventures in our mind. Our imaginations take us to places. And we get to do that together. And so that's pretty exciting. That's pretty fun. Mm. It sounds like it was, it sounds like it. It is. Yeah, I'm sure you've had that. I don't know who you. Or you, friends or stuff like friends that. Friends. Yeah. Your brother that you, get, you go someplace, like you make up a game and it's, it's, it's a fun way to. Or like a neighbor that you really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and my friend once made up this really stupid, really fun game. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's a it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Share that with somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It kind of bonds you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some movie magic secrets about the Planet of the Apes or Move On? Like in Move On, in the in the uh, live version, like the one that you do that's not animated. Yes. Uh, like how how the witch turns into the hawk and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because the actress actually knows how to turn into a hawk. So all they <laughs> do is just turn on the camera and off she went. It's really cool, though, because they teach her. It's a lot of practice. It's a mix of choreography, right? The actress. In this case, the witch is played by Gong Li, who I don't know if you know about. The her. person actually turned into a hawk. No, he is just, just, kidding. Kidding. just kidding. He's just kidding. But the actress who plays the witch, who's named Gong Li, who is a very famous um, actress in China, um, she spent a lot of time learning these moves that were um, real. And then you mix that with the, the visual effects. So the moment she, she turns her body in a certain way, then the visual effects bring can the bring the hawk in. And there's a lot of time spent figuring out. Exactly. So, so was it a trained talk? Yes. Although a lot of it too is computer generated. It's we a mix. Did, yeah, it's a mix. They did have a trained hawk on, mm -hmm. the, on the set, and uh, which was a beautiful bird. But uh, and the apes on Planet of the Apes, there were no real apes. And in fact, there were even with the, a lot of times the horses were not real either. Um, that was all done through computers. Oh. But, Cool. There's a company in New Zealand called Weta, and they are so smart at how to um, uh, take an image and and animate it. So, mm -hmm. if, and um, and Andy Serkis, who played Caesar, is a great actor, and he would have like an expression on his face, and he would be thinking something, and then the company Weta could take his face and exactly what he was doing and make it into Caesar's face. And it's just incredible how they know oh. how to do that. Mm -hmm. Any actors, living or dead, you'd like to have in one of your movies? Living you could have dead. any living or dead actor. Oh, that's what a good would you have in one of your movies? 
Such a good question. What do you think, Tio? I know what you're going to say. Groucho Marx? I knew that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew it. I so knew it. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't like, be, it'd be him, great. Harco Chico, him, Harco, him, Harpo Chico, Chico Zeppo. Yeah. Sometimes Zeppo. Right. Can you imagine if we could have him today to be in movies, how happy that would make all of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he would be great. He would be great as one of the apes. He'd be very <laughs> funny. Would put him as an ape. As an ape, totally. That would have, he's funny. Yeah, he's very funny. I wish I could have met him. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. I saw him once. When I was a kid, um, my grandmother took me for lunch at the Plaza Hotel in New York City very famous hotel and we were eating lunch and in in walked groucho marx and i was just a kid i was like i was right in between yours and james's age i would guess and i almost fell out of my chair did he walk did he have that funny walk he, no he was very um he kind of crouched low you know, he had a little smile on his face he didn't look very serious he looked kind of old which was upsetting to me because he looked so old. But, um, and I was very embarrassed because my grandmother wanted to get up and say something to him. Oh, no. And I was very embarrassed. I had to like keep her sitting at the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've almost got to meet his grandson since every, every, uh, every um, New Year's uh, Day uh, at one of the theaters uh, in Santa Monica, they, show a few, like 10, I think it's like five Groucho movies back to back. And before it starts, his grandson talks a little about him. Wow. And the movie, then, and then they- oh, Wait, so is his grandson a grown, this. how old is his grandson, would you guess? I don't know, like maybe like 45. Does he look like a Marx? Does he look does like he have like the, the Does he look like any of the Marx brothers? Mm, sort of. Well, that sounds like a lot that of That sounds really cool. Is it the Arrow Theater that you go to? Actually, I'm pretty sure it is. The Arrow Theater. Well, next well, time you go, year, yeah. uh, I, think, I think my dad could text you this stuff for, uh, for whenever the pandemic is over. Yeah. Good okay. idea. We'd love to go. We'd love to go with you guys. Okay. Tell us what you are working on now during the pandemic if you are working on anything well we're working on a tv show right now we've never done a tv show before and do you want to talk yeah, about sure. it it's based on a book it was a best-selling book called cersei and cersei was a minor character uh in the odyssey she's a witch and she lives on the island where odysseus and his men come and visit and so the, uh, Madeline Miller wrote a book about this character and kind of built this whole book out about her life and, um, and how she became a witch and how she ended up on the island and what happens to her. It's Greek mythology. And it's, yeah, it's Greek mythology. So we're basically retelling Greek mythology, but from mm -hmm. a feminine point of view. And uh, okay. that's what we're doing. A lot of adventure. A lot of, they're monsters, gods and monsters. Gods love monsters. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was your favorite movie that you did not make? Well, this is an interesting question because I was thinking about this. We have favorite movies now, you know, like what are we really into now? And then as we look back at our life, like what was our favorite movie of all time? And I was thinking, what was my favorite movie when I was about your age? And so they're all really different. But I would say... When I was really little, Wizard of Oz was one of my favorites. Mm, and then the greatest that's a classic. Escape, yeah, I'd say The Great Escape when I was little. But my, but as I've gotten older, um, it gets hard. I think the Godfather movies. Are my yeah, favorite. my dad loves them. What would you say? I love the Godfather movies too. I think from I think my there's it's hard to pick a favorite to be honest, Hud. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like maybe Young Frankenstein is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, thought, I've, uh, my dad showed me like a clip of it since he keeps saying something from it. Um, yeah, it's very quotable. Yeah, and um, 
my favorite movie. I'm not sure. It's probably one of the Marx Brothers movies. Maybe Duck Soup or Night at the Opera. Yeah. Hard to or, choose. Or it? Monkey Business. Mm. I think Night at the Opera is my favorite Marx Brothers I'd movie. I'd say it's probably. Mine is Monkey Business or uh, or Duck Soup for sure. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should call our next Planet of the Apes movie, Monkey Business. <laughs> if Groucho <laughs> Marx, that's it. If Groucho Marx was in a Planet of the Apes movie, we'd call it Monkey Business. Mm-hmm. That would be funny. Thank you, Rick and Amanda, and see you next time at the Hudson Hangout. Thank you, Hud. Thanks for having us on your show.